Agenda and minutes. Is there any questions, comments on that? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion. We'll move to approve the agenda and minutes. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. I don't think we have anyone in here yet for years of service. Do you um, know? Cinnamon is not going to be attending, um, okay. but I can go see if Connie's going to come in and okay. Nick. Yep, that'll work. I'll get these signed. committee minutes and wellness minutes next two kind of things up here um, did everyone see them in the packet yep. any questions all right I think I said this board report maybe a week or two ago but we are as you can see there we're going to every other month meetings now instead of every month Oh, no, she's got a meeting today, so she okay. is not able to make she's it. She's not going. Okay. No. Uh, is Phil's extension still the same? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know what well, it is off the top actually, of my head, but yes. Uh, you just 395. Uh, I'll just try him on. So, because if he's... He's walking over. He won't be walking from the hospital. Oh, oh, oh he's not over there. <laughs> A long walk. Yes. Yeah, that's why I was like, hey, are you coming in for EMS update on our agenda today? Oh, okay. You didn't didn't know it was on there? Okay. Um, okay. We will postpone that to next week if you want to do that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. He said he didn't realize it was on there and he was out all day yesterday. So um, if we can postpone that to next week. Yeah. He's working um, general assistance or is Donna want to postpone that to next week or do you know if she had anything? I don't know that she had anything. So okay. I will ask her if she wants to be done next week. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. we can go to years of service, back to years of service awards. 25 years. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Great. And then Cinnamon was also 25 years of yes. service. All right. Next thing on our agenda here is to set the date and time for FY24-25 budget amendment. Um, in our back, and Tammy has it. Requesting September 17th, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. Um, yeah, it's still the same, requesting it. It'll be in the paper uh, next, no, yeah, next week's paper, next Thursday's, next Wednesday and Thursday's papers. Um, then we'll be able to hold a hearing on the 17th. Okay. And it's it will be the same amendment that you saw last week, but I will email it to you again when I send it to the paper. Okay. All right. Any 
discussion or questions on that. Okay, if not, I'd entertain a motion to set that date and time. Okay, I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. Chris, you got um, homestead and military disallowances? Yep, so. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, for the year, we had 116 that sold, 47 deceased, four with signed transfer forms, and 48, uh, the owner no longer lives either on the property or um, like the military, they can still get it if they, they don't live there, but if they move out of state, they no longer qualify for those. Um, the list and everything was in your packet. Yep, correct. Uh, these are yep. signed. Is there any is there questions? questions on any of that? All right. Um, Homestead and military. Homestead and military disallowances. Okay, I'll second that. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. Thank you. And we'll I'll sign them here after the meeting okay. and stuff. Thank you. Bring them Thanks, over. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep, you too. Um, Okay, next up is designation of Snyder and Associates as County Inspector for some Carbon Solutions Carbon Transport Pipeline. Uh, this is also in our packet. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything about it, Tammy, or? Um, I just got an Sorry, email Steve. from um, Christina from Snyder's. And I did put the email, I believe, in your packet. Um, and she was just letting us know that Summit Carbon has filed numerous applications with the IUC to construct and operate laterals that connect the poet facilities to the main line throughout Iowa. In Kasuth County, they propose to add 22.13 miles of pipeline. The informational meeting in Kasuth County is scheduled for September 16th in Lakota. She's planning on being there on behalf of Kasuth County. Um, but since this has been filed under a separate docket, um, a designation of county inspector should be filed under that docket. So okay. she is requesting that um, we approve this supplemental agreement for additional services. Yep, and I had it in my notes here for board discussion and stuff, but I mentioned a little earlier, we did get a letter from Fredrickson and Byron, attorneys down in Des Moines, um, it's a letter dated August 16th, but just received it here on the 21st, uh, that this firm represents Summit, and it kind of lays out the same thing pursuant to Iowa Administrative Code 199-13.2, number seven, uh, that they're requesting we provide the name of the county inspector. Um, who shall conduct the on-site inspection, which is required by Iowa Code 479B.20, Section 2, for Kasuth County. So um, it does have a notice of the informational meeting, which I already talked about, of September 16th, 2024, 6 p.m. at the Eagle Center in Lakota, um, and then a map is attached. So if anyone has any questions on any of that, that was also received. So she, but there's two different things on the agenda. One, to approve Snyder and Associates as the county inspector for SCS Carbon Transport Pipeline, and the second, to approve the supplemental agreement for additional services. Yep. Well, I would move to designate Snyder and Associates as the county inspector for the SCS Carbon Pipeline. Okay. Oh. Jack seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Okay, and then as Tammy just said, the next thing is the supplemental agreement for additional services. 
Uh, it is their standard fee schedule, which is attached and in our packet. Um, that email, Tammy read, also is there. So um, I'd move to approve the supplemental agreement. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. Hey. Yep. Oh, we might be waiting at, until nine. <laughs> I didn't think that was too late to schedule it, but it wasn't really a lot. Uh, yeah, Lisa Carter in the boardroom. Hey, we are ready whenever he is. Oh. Yep. Thank you. Mm. Bye. Drainage and then we'll be waiting. a couple things for right away in our packet so I don't know if everyone's seen them or not or in our folder I should say Did you have a question? Jerry. Actually, did the budget amendment? You said the date for it, but two years you discuss ago. what's going to yeah, be. Yeah, but I mean, the drone wire family farm is that's right been away. voted on. Okay. That's a six o'clock meeting. Oh, yeah, that was voted. Yeah. There's that was voted on there. there. Is what? That, that aspect of it yeah, was voted on there. Yes. Okay. Chris, Kevin. Could you? Chris's. We're waiting for Doug. Yeah. Because we're kind of waiting. Can you reiterate what's going to be in that budget amendment? Just because I know there's some people here. And I'm I don't have the information in front of me but as far as the amounts, but it'll be the library's um, um, refunding EMS, or I'm sorry, EMA, emergency management. Um, what are the other things? That's it. No, there's. Oh, no, there's um, stuff for medical, um, mental health, health transports, transport. and. Um, Oh, bonds and uh, insurance. insurance. Yeah. And can I get that from you later? It'll go. It'll be going to the paper to be published here. Right, but we have a deadline. But like, like after, like after the meeting, can I come to your office and get it? Yeah, if okay. I have it all ready to go, yes. Okay. All right, Doug. We are ready for construction in the right of way. Uh, we have no requests today. However, there are two. Uh, outlets that uh, tile outlets that we are working on uh, one is for it says Jerome wider but it should be Juliet Julie wider uh, which would excuse me too many widers Jerome wider yes is correct and that one is down in the east side of section 30 of Irvington Township uh, that uh, property has a tile that outlets in the road ditch right now um, it is the tile is significantly lower than a uh, road cross pipe where the water has to raise and go underneath the road uh, the wider family have visited with the uh, adjacent landowner and they would like to project that tile under the road and outlet it on the neighbor's property we're in the process of 
putting together an agreement and getting everybody's concurrence and uh, terms of that agreement put together and hopefully next week that will be completed. And then Julie Weider, uh, there is another similar situation. However, there is a tile that's in the road right away and they would like to hook on to that tile. Uh, that would be on the east line of 29 at Cresco Township and we, as, I think uh, that title definitely, that agreement will be uh, worked on this week and uh, possibly uh, they would like to do the work. So I guess on both of these, if we would get all of these um, signatures that we need to have, um, would the board be against me giving them verbal to complete the work? Um, only question I had, the second one you talked about there, is that tile running parallel to the road? In it the is. Edge? Okay, that's what it kind of looked like there. So. The portion that they're hooking on to anyway, I'm not sure. Uh, it runs north to the creek there and outlets. And that's an existing private tile? That's that is correct. Along the road? Okay. All right, anything else for right away? No, there's no requests, other requests. Okay, we can roll into discussion then. Uh, construction, the bridge on the boat Hobarton Road is now open. Uh, guardrail was constructed yesterday, so the bridge is open and open to traffic. Um, Merriman Bridge construction did start the bridge on the West line of Section 26 of Prairie Township. Uh, they, sh I believe, they have the deck removed and removing the substructure, so they'll be uh, starting to put in the new substructure soon. Uh, we have been attempting to mow a little bit on pavements, uh, not getting as much done as what we would like. We've had some breakdowns with mowers. Uh, we are out maintaining today, so we do not have anybody there just mowing. Uh, from the road department, that's kind of everything for that. Uh, zoning, the solar ordinance moratorium. Um, last week it was published in papers. The first consideration is next week. And I believe, I need to check with you, Tammy, to make sure that there is a, uh, a gender request on that. Uh, I also emailed, there's a community uh, conversation on solar power, September 17th at 5.30, and I emailed the Board of Supervisors for that. It is going to be limited to 60 people, so if you want to attend, I would encourage you to register for that. And then also, uh, this would be Summit Carbon Solutions, I think it's September 16th, the day before, and that's up at the Eagle Center in Lakota, there is a meeting. Yep, it is. On that. And Doug, I have two agenda requests, one for 9 o'clock September 3rd for the hearing and one to approve the first reading. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's really that all that I have for the Board of Supervisors. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the Board? All right. Thanks, Doug. Okay. All right. Do you know if Marge is ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. I forgot to text her. Right? <laughs> Go ahead. All it. right. I think that community conversation with solar is what the planning zoning commission had ask the Luke C Seabird or, mm -hmm. or whatever uh, from, from, from Iowa State. State. Yep. yep. I think that's the same thing. And why is it limited to sixty people though? I have no idea. Is that over at the election center? No, it's at the college. Oh, out there. Yep. Okay. So it might be the room size? Could be depending on what room they have it in. Yeah. My old whole office is like, what? Already? <laughs> We've been moving this I know, morning. I get it. <laughs> right. Morning, March. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got a 
couple of repair requests. Um, We can read it off, but he can sign it when he's back. Um, they're all, yeah, I can read it, that's fine. They're all in the packet here, so I'm going to read some I've never gotten to read. <laughs> you can have the joy of reading it. There you go. Have, a, have at it then. We'll put you on the spot first, see if you can handle it. All right. So Roger has a request in drainage number 61, this is number 97. Uh, there is a broken tile with a hole in the field in Plum Creek Township. Um, this is by original shooter. Section 12 yeah. of Plum Creek. Yeah. Section 12. Yep. All right. Number 96 for me is DD80, lot 55, lead yard 18. Um, it's a flagged uh, broken tile, small washout, east of the bend, Dwayne Loft. 98 is DD4, sub 10, and Eagle 27, broken tile, washout, couple areas for Bill Lofstrom. And then 99 is DD4 sub 10, also Eagle 34, blowout southeast of Bulkhead, large washout, broken tile, Bill Officer. So those are my three. I'd entertain a motion for Okay. I'll second. second. Okay. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carried unanimous. And then Roger can sign that in the back. And okay. If you go in the GIS, there's GPS locations for all those and okay. pictures, okay. as well as um, got some drone footage of the larger washout okay. in Irvington. So, uh, so I'll send you that email here. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. For FEMA. Okay. Yep. All right. Anything else for drainage? Thank you, Mark. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Marge. Um, uh, I guess quick update on D on the FEMA stuff with DD four primarily. Um, the person at the state that is handling it, we're hoping to have stuff kind of wrapped up by Friday, so she can send that off. She's been going through paperwork and um, called me last night to ask a couple questions about that as well so i think we're hopefully getting close to have that one sent on um not exactly sure why it's taking this long but here we are um, do we have anything nothing else for drainage okay um tammy discussion with the auditor okay so next week uh, as Doug talked about we have the public hearing for the proposed amendment to the Casey County zoning ordinance at 9 o'clock and then to approve the first reading after that um, yep. so far besides our regular agenda items that's all we have scheduled there um, <clears throat> our office is very busy um, right now today um, people can turn in their absentee ballot request forms to request ballots for the um, general election. Tomorrow we have uh, the public test for the special election on September 10th and then on Thursday we have training for the special election. So we have two elections kind of going on at the same time. Um, so kind of busy with that. Um, 
when we meet next week, it'll be September, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. The courthouse is closed Monday in observance of the holiday. Um, and then I think that is all I have right now. Is all right. Thank you. Jack, do you have anything? Yep, the uh, board of health meeting <coughs> last week. Um, just went through health, healthy families credentialing and state grant for public health public health update, emergency preparedness grants to counties update. And um, Joe uh, Garman will be a new board member there. Uh, once here in another by the next meeting we'll probably approve him, you know, he'll be joining the, the uh, Board of Health. And then yesterday we had a early childhood up in Bancroft. Um, <clears throat> basically the, the state is making changes and, and it kind of screwed up their budget. <clears throat> so we had to have we had a, a financial meeting first to decide what we're going to do. Basically, we had to do a 20% cut across the board on all the on all the um, um, RFPs because the the state won't let us use the sixty thousand dollars carryover we have. We have to show only what the state is giving us for money, and then later on, once that that when that's approved. And then the uh, carryover is included in that. Then we can use that carryover. So mm -hmm. we have to do a do a uh, reduction for now, and then later on, all these uh, RFPs can come back in. Providers can come back in and request additional money if they need it, which they probably all will. And then we'll have to uh, we'll give them some more money later. So <clears throat> that was kind of a mix up with the state and some of the other providers over there said they're having the same problem with the strict state on some of their grants uh, uh, kind of playing playing games with, the, with some of the budgets it sounds like so um, whether that was kind of the main part of it uh, over the mission and vision statement uh, reviewed the preschools con preschool contracts um, quite a few kids enrolled uh, for the uh, uh, tuition assistance I think about, about 178 in Texas lab uh, home visit the state's requiring that they home visits uh, per families they have at least two per month and one of the providers said well they had a family that is requested that they don't need to be seen twice a month they'd like to be seen once a month yeah, because the kids are back in school and so they just can't feel like they need to be seen twice a month and, uh, like Selena said well the state's requiring two per month it, it's it's micromanagement it's just not you know it isn't right but anyway, that's what they have to do uh, and then uh, Selena went over her uh, profession development plan for 2025 and our next meeting will be September 23rd. All right. Anything else? Nope, that's what I have. Okay, thanks. Josh, do you have anything? Yeah, last week we all attended the joint meeting EMA. Board of Supervisors had some good discussion on um, how things need to go, and, and since then, um, Chris has called a meeting for September 10th to kind of discuss some of those things and look at bylaws and, and budget and things like that. So, moving forward in that area, are they planning on reviewing claims at that meeting? Uh, there's discussion about the claims. I don't know if they'll be reviewing the claims or discussing how to go forward with reviewing the claims regularly. That's probably all going to be discussed. Okay. I don't have that actual agenda, just a short list of items to be talked about. So that was one of the items. Okay. I guess I would I would say that'd probably be something that should be on there. Yep. If you follow up with Chris on that. Um, since we 
discussed it as a whole should be addressed fairly soon. Anything else? No. Okay. Carter? Uh, no, I guess I was also at that meeting and attended a meeting with FEMA on Friday with Marge. Okay. No. Went over stuff for that. So. Uh, they were getting them all the information and materials that they need and set a time to meet the inspector out of those sites and go from there. Yep. And I don't believe I really had anything that would apply for FEMA. So we have 60 days, year. 60 days to get all that put together. The initial stuff. Yep. 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 Is anyone else so, aware of anything? I know Carter's got a couple. Um, we, we've submitted three so far. Okay. Yep. One for, one for Dave Rose, well two for Dave Rose and Meyer along Purcell Creek and one very large washout and one smaller one but, and then one over west of Wesley and Old 18. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think we talked about PAC-1. Did, we did um, talk about PAK-1 uh, and Marge and I have communicated with Colin back and forth a little bit and with our board discussion we're not going to, doesn't look like we're going to be submitting anything for FEMA for PAK-1 just, just hasn't been that many damages in 2024. Okay. Yep. And the damages that were are there aren't that severe to warrant going through all that. Okay. Yep. Unfortunately. I mean fortunately but it's good that everything held up. It's just mm -hmm. yeah too bad we couldn't have gotten that for last year. Right. So yeah that would have made a big difference. So all right, anything else that you had? Nope. I got care connections this afternoon. All right. Um, Tammy and Marge and I had a conversation with a landowner in DD110 yesterday for a good couple hours. Um, he had, um, I, don't, I don't know if he's retired or not, but he had experience as an accountant and went through the numbers on DD-110 since he's an affected landowner, wanted to make sure he was understanding everything. He had some questions, we talked through some stuff. Um, he was going to go back and review what I would say was kind of a significant piece of the puzzle um, that he had not calculated for, but I think a lot of that is just the understanding of the mechanics of the situation and, and yeah kind of drainage as a whole um, so what he had in here he had a figure bless you, um, that where was it first page his his summary here has that he had figured a shortfall of $238,000 um, of accrued interest during the project up until the assessment was done. And if you do rough, simple math from 16 to 24 at 6% interest, you basically come up with exactly what we show as outstanding. I mean, actually what we show is a little bit less, but I rounded things on the high end when I did simple math, but um, he had not accounted for that, but that's six figures worth of interest when you're talking that dollar figure times 6% times eight years. Um, so I guess the only the only big piece of the puzzle that I think we still need to kind of talk about as a board is the assessment between the north and the south main when this project was done was split in the payments and the assessments. Um, the north main paid 13.8% of the assessment South Main paid 84.6% of the assessment, secondary roads paid 1.6. And these are 
his numbers, but I don't have any reason that they're wrong. And that's from um, 17, right? Uh, this is from the assessment in 16. 16. Yep. Um, so what we assessed was just on the south main, which is still the lion's share of it. But if the north main, I think that's something we need to figure out the reason that the north main paid just shy of 15% because if they were figured to benefit that much from that project, this bill for interest should probably be split the same way, um, percentage wise. So that's, that's something we probably need to do some more digging on and take into account. I was not aware that the project benefited both laterals when we did this assessment since it was so long ago um, and the split between North Main and South Main and all that so I guess I just wanted to make the board aware of that and Tim Lovell's calling me right now. Hey Tim. Oh, yep. Um, I can send you a picture of our conference call line. We'll, we have that scheduled at 9 a.m. if that still works for you. So, perfect. Yep, I will send you a picture of that here in a second. Thank you. Yep, bye. Um, it was a very constructive conversation, it was. I thought. We, yep. um, I was glad that we had that conversation with him. Um, I think we all all were thought it was a beneficial conversation so those are always good yeah <laughs> yep thanks Carter. yep uh, so if anyone has not seen his report and would like to um here's a copy of it otherwise you can email stuff out too but yeah um all right then um I'm sorry, do you mind? Go ahead. Yeah. On Thursday down at ISAC, Kyle and I were able to attend a joint session with the auditors and supervisors about elections. And the main purpose of that, it was presented by auditors, was to um, let supervisors know how secure our elections are in Iowa and what processes the auditors go through in the state of Iowa to make sure that we have a secure election process. And I thought that was a very good session. It was. Um, and, yeah. um, so we have set, actually originally, we have set our test, public test date in October for a general election. I can't remember what date it is, but it's on a Tuesday at 10 o'clock. We looked at that Yeah, one. so we're hoping that you as the board will be able to attend that morning morning so you can we, see we what will the process put that on our agenda. So you can see what the process is and what we go through. Um, um, to make sure that we have a secure election process. And so when you have questions, that you have the information to provide those answers. So yeah. that will be on the agenda and hoping that you all can attend that. Yeah, and um, so a little bit funny, but there was one of the auditors that was presenting said he's played a game with either constituents or supervisors or whatever, where um, they can come up with whatever crazy idea they have that they think, oh, I can get around your systems. If I do this, then I can vote multiple times or I can do this, that, and whatever. And he said, then it's just a game. So they they throw out their ideas and then he responds with, well, that won't work because of this, this, and this. And um, it's, it's, I just thought it was kind of a creative idea to it's something talk that through they that. Do, um, when they go to meetings and they have a group of auditors that are together, they play this game of, okay, let's see if we can mm -hmm. come up with a scenario and um, crack your own system. Yes. 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 Yeah. So. Um, so I don't think we're gonna do like they're doing in Texas right now, where they're raiding uh, Democratic homes and uh, looking for. Uh, uh, ballots or something. Ballots, <laughs> really. Different stuff. The state, the state is raiding Democratic homes, uh, thinking that there's uh, election fraud. Well, then maybe they need to look at their own 
system first because yeah, if I, there's ballots in homes and they have a bigger issue with the way the laws well, are being yeah upheld. and that's and that's one of the big things we talked about i mean it's i didn't even hear about that till right it's now so it's, news this morning. well and okay but either way um that's one of the things people probably need to keep in mind is with the federal system, states are responsible for their election laws um, and how those are conducted. And I think they said there's some rank, national ranking or survey or whatever from a non part, like a research institute or whatever, where I was elections are ranked as one of the most secure or something. I think last year we were two or three in the nation, so that's very, very, very high, and we're very yeah. proud of that um, system. But, um, yeah, I think it keeps um, getting better. And You know, two years ago, maybe three years ago, the state passed a law that now um, if the auditor's office or an election official makes a mistake, it's called a technical infraction, and they can be charged with up to a felony and a $10,000 fine. And that's to help prevent any misconduct from happening. And um, I think, although it's a scary law, because sometimes things happen you can't control when you're not at the precinct, um, it reminds people of, of how serious elections yeah. are and, and um, how, how good we need to be at our jobs. And you have to have teeth and things to be able to enforce them. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's an Iowa law. So, it, I mean, all those things help to make us as good as we are. As good as we are. Yeah. yeah. So, we can be proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If I just look at a couple of years ago and Iowa's elections or yeah. like that, yeah. and then other than races that are within five sure. votes or something, yeah. then yeah. they get recounted. But right. That's yeah. normal. Yeah. I mean, all these other states that are taking weeks and weeks or months to yeah. settle. Yeah. And, and I think we can partially thank legislators for that and partially thank yep. our, our state auditor's office um, for implementing a great system. We also have a SEAT committee, and I don't know if you heard in the national news, but SEAT um, is our election administration training. And we all have to be certified. All of us that are in I voters and all of us that are conducting elections have to be certified. Yeah. Seat just received a national award for that, so um, that's another thing we can be very proud of. Yeah, so. yeah that's good. Well, thanks for that update. Yep. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Um, so sorry, forget about that. No, you're good. You're good. Um, and we already talked about the. Um, meeting at the Eagle Center, that was also one of my notes. ISAC was, well, ISAC and I had a NACO meeting yesterday. One of the kind of big things for our discussion with Ag and Rural Affairs was about water shortages. And there are some counties out in California that were um, kind of used as example. And I, I know we're probably in a much better position than some of them. But there was even some discussions with the severe drought last year of kind of what if or contingency plans if, say, a town's water source was to not be able to supply enough water here locally. So hopefully that's never something we have to deal with, but um, there was kind of some good information in that conversation yesterday. And then, as Tammy said, ISAC here this last week. Um, on Thursday, uh, there was several good conversations, but at the end of the day, um, there was a award ceremony for certified Iowa Certified County Supervisors Program. I was recertified for the 23, 24 years. Um, and I was originally certified two years prior to that, but um, then we also had the discussion on the elections. We had a pretty, pretty solid panel on budgeting and House File 718 was discussed prior to that and, and stuff as well. But I guess there was, there was some 
major points that I took away from that conversation and I think we'll need to have um, I think there's a lot of potential resources around the state um, whether it's other supervisors other auditors whatever um, that I think it's it's valuable to look at and listen to what they've done how they've handled different things and kind of take pieces of each and pick what we feel is the best and move forward that way as far as processes or whatever but um, there was three supervisors on that panel for the budget stuff and I think they all had valuable things to share so I guess I I would have recommended it for the whole board and the whole conference as a whole but I was only able to go down on Thursday with some other things going on as well so one of the biggest things that I learn and maybe Kyle too at these conferences is is just because we do it a certain way and have done it that way for so long doesn't mean it's right or wrong but you can get maybe more effective ways of doing things from other other county leaders and yep. um, or maybe things that you think you know maybe we should try that mm -hmm. maybe it won't work for our county maybe it will um, or you know um, just different ideas of how they do it in different counties um, and I think that's one of the biggest things I get from these conferences is talking to other auditors other supervisors other elected officials getting ideas sometimes even outside the meetings yeah getting other ideas of what works for them what they tried that didn't work you know and um, I think um, this conference was a very good conference in learning um, ways other counties have changed what they've always done and it works so and even if it's they they do XYZ or do have a certain idea even if we take 1% or 5% or 10% of what they said and apply it it still can make a positive impact um, and that's some of it you have to kind of weigh the information and try and make an informed decision on what could or or would make a positive difference but just being exposed to the information I think is very valuable and a lot of times it's it doesn't cost us anything it's just an idea it's not you know implementing a new program or software it's just an idea yeah. so it, it's it's at no cost to us you know it's well one of the things that was shared there was uh, kind of for the purpose of better clarity or better information to taxpayers mark campbell from webster county said that for any county that uses beacon um, they can put a pie chart on each property that shows the representative breakdown of where your taxes go so it's going to show 50 percent to the schools and and all those different categories that we all talk about during the budget hearing and we have pie charts for some examples but they can put that on every single parcel so if someone's looking up their own taxes or their neighbor's taxes or whatever and it's free it's just you don't know about it until you're informed about it they don't do it automatically um, there's other counties that are trying to that one in particular that has solutions they are asking them about changing things in their software so that like a pie chart or something like that could be directly implemented on the tax statements when they go out and solutions hasn't completely gotten back to them but they did have a possibility that that might cost a certain amount of money to change their programming or whatever to accommodate that but if they pay for it as one county I would think there'd be efficiency in doing it for doing the same thing for multiple counties so there's a lot of options that you get exposed to by being there it's also good for legislative action because like for example um, the tax mailings that we were required by law to do cost the state a lot of money and so I know they 
um, are looking at presenting that to the legislature. Um, so if they continue, hopefully continue to do the tax mailings, that it might need to be funded by the state because so counties can't handle doing that every year at that cost. As, as a board, anyone got a guess on what that cost statewide for those mailers? There's four counties that did not respond to the this survey. auditor that did the survey, yeah. but the rest, uh, the other 95 are totaled up. Um, anyone want to take a stab at the total price tag across the state for mailings? Just for that mailing, Just that, that new mailing. mailing. 15 million? Oh no. Mm-hmm. No. Higher than that? Lower than that. Oh. Well, I was just trying to compute, <laughs> compute 95 counties times population. Yeah, I mean, in, in some regards, that's the correct way to think about it, but um, any other guesses? 875000 oh, So okay. almost a million dollars across the state for one piece of paper per property. Yep. So, so they must not figure that because what didn't it cost our county? Or just 20? like 10? Yeah, thousand? just less than 10. Oh, that's less than I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have our costs for our regular tax statements and all that stuff. That's too. additional. Uh, that's okay. not the okay. same. So this is just the bill for this new mailing. It's almost a million. So, I mean, if it's positive information, I can see a benefit to that, but I think there's a Nobody higher percentage of confusion than Nobody understanding. Nobody knew what it was. Mm. It was confusing. So I, we all got calls on it last fall, and what does this mean? This doesn't make any sense, and I had trouble making sense of it myself yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll see if anything changes yeah. before the next meeting. I know they're bringing it back. Yeah. So. Well, we kind of filled in our time here before nine, but let's take a quick five minute break and come back and then we will be able to continue our agenda here. Yeah. 
No, I'm guessing they're probably not going to list the crush down there again this fall. I hope so. Okay. Well, they've got that baby pile there, which is good. And then they're coming down to the Reddings were there for just a day or two as a baby pile. And then they're coming in with all these different semis all the way I'm guessing shop must have bought some gravel from the county. I called yes. Doug and asked him what the hell is going on. They said, if you're selling gravel, I want to buy some. He said, no, we didn't sell it. Oh, yeah. Blacktop work up north. This is for the blacktop service. And then the semis are hauling it up to uh, that pile of that bird, that crap they were up there, and dropping it off to make it the blacktop. They said, oh. So they made a separate pile to keep the allocation? Yep. So they can uh, track them out. Because then they have Luke Slayer from the JS there with his drone. They'll size the pile if they ever make ton of work. I don't know how to get paid. Ready, I suppose they got a calibration on the back. But I've been told that several people they turned. We did, we did more than we did. Right. You know, I'm all ready. That changes when they would measure it and throw it way off. They ain't supposed to do that. If you want to know all about my job, Ellen, I'm going to try Ellen Gordon used to work for him in Boy. I don't know, super bad. He used to call me all the time. Well, it's new. He said, it's new. 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 I think when they actually set the asphalt plant up, oh, in okay. here, you're right here, you know, because that's everything's right there. Because there's not a lot of claim that might be done on the south side, so that's you just should really do a lot of good options there. When going in forward fashion, when going in forward fashion, it says it's going to be all we did. It's just sometimes how it's worth it. Well, you still like to interrupt with me. I mean, I really know he might stop. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I went by there the other day, me and the daughter was about a week ago, a couple weeks ago. We looked at it, we picked a couple, there's probably 60, 70, 80 apples on the tree. I mowed there Friday, there's three apples, and I had to pull the pull one off from some place to pick all my apples. It's like, get faster. Really? The only thing I ever see there is that dough and a few ponds that. They have eight ponds on the ground, but they can't get the ones from the very top. Oh. I thought, well, oh, Okay. Um, do you have video and stuff of it, or like of the Dropbox and stuff to verify that? One of our kittens, the kitten arched up and swung out and the box took off running the hook. Really? Yeah. And and actually, I can probably come over there after. I, in a meeting right now, and I'll have to go pretty quick, but, um, no, you're fine, you're fine, um, but, yeah, I will, I will try and check on that, and I will, st I'll probably stop over there here once I'm done. Yeah, just, just hold it for now. Okay. 
They do Perfect, that. thank you. Yep. That's why now we put it in pans and we don't take it in the house. She feeds it for a while and takes it out. So we go up front, the pots be in one pan and the kids will be in the other pan. It's like, and then the coon will boss and come in and clean up the left. We only have one goofy looking coon come in the middle of the day and do it day. He didn't make it too far. I told the daughter, I said, run yet, don't take off for you. She lunged at it, I lunged at her, and I'm going to call her out. <laughs> We're done. Uh, yeah, I think we want to. Smack them in the back of the head, you're in the tail, walk over the pitch. I'm aware of it. It's harder than the tail. It's harder than the ball leather. They do bite, you can't hurt you, because they, uh, they can't get them very big piece. Off the work here, man. A rattlesnake can bite a possum and the possum will just shake it off. I don't know why we can't even use this as much. Welcome to AT&T Teleconference Service. Please enter your access code, followed by the pound sign. To join the conference, as the host, press star. Otherwise, stop. Please enter your host password, followed by the pound sign. There are two participants on the call, including you. You are joining your conference as the host. For a menu of available commands, press star pound. All right, Tim, are you there? Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Good okay. morning. Good morning. Yep. Um, we are still in open session right now. Is it your recommendation to go into closed session to discuss this? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, is there any questions from the board for Tim before we go into closed session? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to go into closed session pursuant to Iowa Code 21.5 1C um, to discuss litigation strategy with legal counsel regarding the final decision and order of the Iowa Utilities Commission in the Summit Carbon Pipeline Permit Proceedings. Is there a motion to that effect? Yep. I'll, I'll make a motion to that effect. Okay. I will second that. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Clap. Yes. Quapter. Yes. Nath. Yes. Steckert. Yes. Motion carries. We will 